Good evening. The Delhi police have moved the High Court appealing against the discharge of Congress leader Shashi Tharoor and the death of his late wife, Sunanda Pushkar. The court had over a year ago discharged him, saying that there is no evidence that he was actively involved in any kind of conspiracy to kill his wife. The Congress party has hit back, saying that this is nothing but a witch hunt. What is the basis for the case against Shashi Tharoor? I'll be speaking to the man who started this all, Dr. Subramanian Swamy. But before that, the story of the day so far. Let's go across to the man who started this all, uh, basis whose complaint this whole case was registered against uh, Shashi Tharoor. Dr. Subramaniam Swami, former member of parliament of the BJP, is now joining us. Uh, Dr. Swami, thank you very much for speaking with us. First things first, like I said, it started with your moving the Delhi police and asking them for a probe into Shashi Tharoor's late uh, wife's death. It took seven years for the discharge case against Tharoor to happen in the first place and earlier last year. Uh, the uh, Delhi court had discharged him saying that there is want of evidence. Now, 15 months later, the Delhi police uh, have approached the court again. Uh, many are saying they've dug, it, dug up this case again. What is exactly the end game here? Because what new has the police found in terms of the last 15 months to warrant going back to the court asking for an appeal against the discharge? Well, the Delhi police has gone in appeal against the uh, order in the uh, uh, in the lower court, and uh, so. But the question is right. You have asked a correct question. Why did they say it takes so long to uh, wake up to after having gone to the upper court and uh, filed an appeal against the uh, lower court's orders? Why did you take so long to uh, go back and start the proceedings? Now, back when the lower court had discharged Mr. Tharoor uh, from the trial of the death of his late wife, uh, the court had cited, and I quote, an absence of specific allegations and sufficient material to warrant that he was in any kind of conspiracy to eliminate his wife. So my question is, what has changed between then and now, between the discharge that happened a year and a half ago and, and uh, the need? to go back to the High Court now and ask for an appeal against that discharge? Well, I don't, then, then it must mean that Delhi police didn't uh, present what was, should have been presented. One was the autopsy report of the All India Medical Institute, which showed uh, lots of, um, you know, marks on our body, uh, an injection hole in our uh, arm which showed that uh, perhaps she was uh, also given a, a poison uh, needle. And uh, uh, she, she had uh, uh, put up a fight, it was also very clear. Uh, what, was the, what was the reason? <coughs> Why was she in a hotel, five, seven star hotel? How could this happen in, in what appears to be 11 o'clock in the morning? But Dr. Swami, tell me this, uh, you talked about the Ames Autopsy Board or even the statement that was given by Sunanda Pushkar's son, uh, in none of this was there any kind of material evidence that her death be treated as some kind of a homicide. So again, I keep going back to this. If neither the autopsy is saying this, nor her closest family members are alleging uh, homicide, then on what basis is the Delhi police re trying to revisit this case, or at least appealing to revisit this case? All India Medical Institute, they gave no such report. I've read that report. I know the uh, forensic <coughs> department's uh, head, and uh, I've spoke, uh, spoken to him also. They all uh, said it was clearly a case of murder. And in fact, it, the FIR was registered only after the 
all india medical institute gave this kind of a thing this is false yes his son uh, or uh, the her son rather yeah. she she uh, he ditched her mother that's a different matter that can be investigated separately why he did that when he was not even in the scene how could you say that it is not murder sitting in uh, dubai so i think uh, there was a lot of uh, attempts to save uh, shashi thurur i hope now the justice will be dealt for sunanda uh, uh, suna pushkar okay uh, dr swami we leave it there thank you very much for joining us uh, we'll see how the courts uh, take up this matter and whether they find grounds for the appeal that's been moved by the delhi police let me now go across uh, to pk jain former ips officer who is joining us ashpreet kadyal is congress party spokesperson kapil sankla lawyer of the supreme court and suman si raman political analyst joining us as well uh, pk jain let me start with you first is it normal that in such a high profile case the death of the wife of a former uh, you know minister uh, a three time parliamentarian uh, such a high profile case that was in the media limelight for a many number of years is it uh the normal course of time 15 months or has there been an inordinate delay in the delhi police approaching the courts for an appeal in this case well this is an inordinate uh, delay this there is no justification for this kind of a delay they should have gone to the court in appeal much earlier in point of time uh, the delays like this do cause a tremendous damage tremendous amount of damage to the case and the uh, the the veracity of the case uh, so there is delay but all said and done uh, delay apart that cannot uh, nullify or neutralize the very fact that there was some uh, prima facie evidence in the case and the case was charged there was no reason for uh, mr tharoor to be discharged in this case and uh, the case should have got, gone on the case should have seen the light of the day it should have gone be, been taken to its logical end and now uh, i'm sure that the high court will certainly look into all these uh, uh, points the the issues raised by the delhi police <laughs> investigating officer okay. and i'm sure that uh, i'm sure that the case the discharge application should would be set aside so kapil sankla uh, you heard from a former ips officer yes the delay has been inordinate and that generally is detrimental to the uh, appeal itself but aside of the delay the question that's being asked by congress party and people close to shashi tharoor is uh you know why this witch hunt you go back to what the court said that there was no material evidence to charge him for any kind of conspiracy or abetment to homicide uh that happened to his uh, uh to to his wife allegedly uh there was nothing uh, uh you know materially against shashitaru so the the charge that's being leveled is that the delhi police is doing this for political purposes and there are political motivations behind this appeal coming as it does 15 months after the discharge well the converse can equally be true isn't it that the delhi police <coughs> delayed the matter till kingdom come for reasons best known and thereafter filed a belated application before the high court that also could be true so there are two versions before you and as far as uh, you know delay being detri- usually detrimental no that's not really correct delay is detrimental a condonation or delay application has to be filed and cogent reasons have to be given the honorable high court and supreme court in number of cases especially in criminal matters have stated time and again that liberal interpretation has to be given because the purpose of criminal investigation and criminal trial is justice and just because of you know just kind of this dilatory tactics etc benefit should not be given to the accused so as far as the first part is concerned about delay it is neither here nor there yes the prosecution or the police does have to justify the delay and i think the condemnation of delay application is there notice has been issued on that now as far as whether it's a politically motivated uh, uh, application or not as i said the converse is equally true and the question is this that how come the investigation at this stage not bring anything at all to show a prima facie case because the 306 case abetment to suicide has uh, you know a very large bandwidth I, you know okay. that i am the lawyer for mr kanda in the gitika case as well and uh, you know the difficulty that you're facing there is that uh, our client hadn't had a word uh with the uh, with the deceased unfortunately uh, for last 6 months and despite that when she uh, committed suicide she named him in the suicide note and uh, there there are evidences to show that he hadn't even had a word with her for 6 months or 10 months or something like that so as i said the leave in 306 is very wide all that you have to show is that you did okay. some act at some stage that probably pushed the person to uh, commit suicide 
No, so uh, Ashwin Kadyal, delay marks, aside, and whatever reasons uh, the Delhi police had for that delay, they'll have to explain to court as to why they took 15 months. But delay aside, is there any other material reason for why you doubt uh, the Delhi police's integrity or the Delhi police's intentions in this matter? Because at the end of the day, this is another routine case. It has to go through the layers of appeal uh, for the case to be finally closed. They believe there is material case against Mr. Tarur. Uh, you may have a different point of view. But a right of appeal is a right given under law. Thank you. Uh, kindly allow me an uninterrupted minute. First of all, this is not an appeal. It's a revision. Number two, you know, when we have courts to do justice, why are certain people, especially the Bharti Janta Party, becoming judge, jury and executioner? Number three, the courts have already discharged uh, Dr. Shashi Tharoor. Therefore, even what the Honorable High Court is considering as of now is the condonation of delay. If delay has to be condoned or not, which is inordinate. It cannot be explained. There is no justification to that. 15 months is a lot of time. Number three, the matter is sub -judice. There are. Uh, I happen to be a lawyer myself. There are other lawyers on the panel. So if a matter is sub -judice, are we even supposed to discuss it, debate upon it? The court had taken strong exception to trial by media and therefore had asserted that no copies are to be given to anyone but the parties concerned with the case. Nevertheless, we are having a trial by media. Number five, you know, it's been no, found no, by the court second, already. One second, one second, Ashpreet, the... Ashpreet, Ashpreet, one second. Nowhere has any court, as far as Mr. Tharoor's matter is concerned, in the last 15 months since he got discharged, nowhere has any court said that the media should not discuss this matter. There is no injunction or stay order of any kind saying that the media should not discuss this matter. And secondly, if you have noticed the, the tone and tenor of this discussion, we are again asking the Delhi police why the inordinate delay. Are you saying that we can't discuss things in this uh, country? I mean, this is after all a high profile case. Uh, Mr. Tarur is an extre extremely media savvy figure. So was his late wife. It was there all over the news for the last, uh, I mean, when it happened in 20. Uh, 14. Uh, and even when the court discharged him uh, 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 the year before last, we covered that as well. We covered that pretty extensively. So, Three, uh, pending things, any court things. injunction, I don't see uh, any merit in this media trial argument. Two things. Two things to that. First, it, there does not have to be an injunction. There does not have to be an order. When the matter is sub -judice, the matter is being decided by the court. Nobody but the court is supposed to have opinions on it, is supposed to discuss it, is Sir, supposed to... what are you saying? As a lawyer, I'm two, amazed you've taken this argument, two. Ashpreet. Now, now, Ram Janabhumi matter time, went on for 30 years. If you would allow me the 30 time... 30 years. Are you telling me media was not discussing it time. for 30 years? Now, would you allow me the time? Aftab case has you, happened for the I'm last three weeks. What the court says. Pending, pending an, uh, an injunction or a stay by any court, we're all discussing that story. So now, now are you saying that when matter is subject, we're supposed to discuss discussion. it? No, no, there is no bar on any discussion. Please, there is no bar on any discussion. As a lawyer, I'm amazed. Uh, again, I'm, I'm sorry. Is, I am amazed that no, no, I'm amazed that you don't know this basic point of law that unless there is an express injunction or stay, when there is an unless there is an express injunction or stay, there is no bar on the media from discussing any matter that is subjudice. Please. When the matter is subjudice, nobody is Sir, what are you saying? 2G case went in the courts for a number of years. Are you saying the media did not discuss it? What are you saying? Now allow me the time to no, no, answer. Ashpreet, one, either you make cogent points. No, no, one second, Ashpreet, either you make cogent policy. legal Number arguments two, or you or you face the, the face the facts the when other panelists the and other uh, members who are on this panel uh, who confront you with the facts. No, no, I'm sorry. Either you make cogent arguments or you please face up to the facts. You said that media should not discuss any case that is sub judice. I gave you an example of Ram Janmabhumi matter went on for 30 years. Gyan Vapi matter has been going on for the last three months. Aftab Shraddha case has been in the courts for the last three weeks. Media has been discussing it. Even the now, only the instance where media the is not allowed to discuss a particular the case if there is an express injunction no, or stay by a court of law. In, mis in this case, there is no media. injunction or stay. And the moment there is an injunction or stay, we will stop discussing it. It has been Come on, as a lawyer, I'm appalled that you don't even know this basic fact. It is unfortunate.
That no, no, no as a lawyer, justice, Ashpreet, I am really sad. It saddens me that you don't know this basic fact. It is unfortunate fact, that, that would, unless there is an express stay or injunction, media, media is free to, to discuss to any court case, case, any matter that is subjudice. Sir, media please media don't, media don't go, media go, media don't go into media. innuendo. You, you Number put out a blatantly untrue statement on the panel. You are confronted by other panelists and the anchor blowing holes in that theory. I now you don't you don't go you, calling Dr. names yaar come on ashpreet really please don't Number call two. names come on please i'm not i'm not going to descend to that level of calling people names Number just four. because your now, argument got now, blown out of the water. Now, Let now, me go to the next guest please. Let me go to Suman Raman. Suman Raman, I want to ask a very very simple question. Yes there is an inordinate delay and as the lawyers on the panel have explained the Delhi police has to explain in court why there was an inordinate delay. Beyond that is there any material argument to argue against the Delhi police going in appeal or asking for a revision of the discharge of Mr. Shashi Tharoor? No, I think, uh, Zaka, even in the original uh, trial, um, there was very clearly a, a, a case of lack of any specific evidence to say that uh, Shashi Tharoor contributed to the abetment uh, to suicide or whatever the charges he was accused of or caused uh, you know cruelty to his wife now that is the fundamental issue so unless the delhi police have suddenly unearthed some new evidence which they did not tell the trial court earlier it makes zero sense except uh, as a political uh, vendetta option uh, to sort of reopen this case and appeal now the delhi uh, police says Look, we've now got um, evidence, uh, you know, of uh, abetment to suicide, which we did not have at the stage of the trial court. That makes sense. But to argue the same case, which has quite clearly been, uh, you know, dealt with, and uh, uh, you know, Mr. Tarur has been completely discharged. I think that uh, that obviously. No, we don't know that, that yet, CPS... Suman. Suman, we don't know that yet. They have to make no, that no, no. case. They have the to make that case in the high court. No, no, one second. They Saka, have to make that case in the High Court. Ashpreet, is your name Sumant Raman? Ashpreet, is your name Sumant Raman? Oh, have some patience. Please hold your horses. Let me let me go to Sumant Raman. Please, please. He's a little more elderly and, and wise than you. So please give him that courtesy. Please, please extend the courtesy to Sumant Raman. One second. Sumant, I'm asking you a simple question. It is incumbent on the Delhi police to prove in court as to why this matter should be taken a fresh look at. They have to prove the onus is on the investigating agency to prove the court to the court that there is material evidence to reopen this case. They have to make that case. They've not made that case yet. Yes. No, no. The point really is, Zaka, that look, look at the logic of the whole thing. This is a matter that happened in uh, the uh, death of Sunanda Pushkar happened in 2014. We are now eight years later in 2022. Correct. The trial has gone on for a substantial period and a judgment has been arrived at. Now, one and a half years or 15 months, the, um, the police does nothing. Now, what could be potentially the reason for the delay is, is one, is something we need to speculate. But more importantly, look at it from a perspective of potentially any um, court looking at this uh, matter when, it's, uh, uh, when somebody goes on appeal 15 months later, Obvious or, or um, uh, revision 15 months later. At the end of the day, unless there is clinching evidence, there is no way that this is going to work. Okay. And sadly, it to me, it seems like more a, an attempt to keep the sword of Democles hanging on Sashi Tharoor. Okay, so the Democles sword sort of, is being no, hung not on that, Not only Zaka, not only hey. Zaka we okay. can do debates, we can do debates. And there will be people who say, did Shashi Tharoor murder his wife? And you know, all this kind of thing which, allow, which allows you to defame and slander Shashi Tharoor for another couple of years. No, no, what one, one second, one second. One, uh, one second. Uh, no, 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 uh, again, I go back sad. to two points. One second, one second, two points. One, if any court of law, including the Delhi High Court, who's been moved today, if they say media, there is an injunction or a stay from discussing this case, the next day, the very next moment, all media will stop discussing this case, number one. Number two, talking about the defaming of uh, uh, Mr. Tharoor, I don't think that's accurate at all because even after this case, no, once again, even a, after a this case, even after this, one second, uh, uh, Suman, Suman, have the patience to listen, Napa. even yeah. after this case came to light, even after quote-unquote uh, so-called media trial, he won two more elections 
from the constituency no, no. of Tiruvannathapuram. He won in 2014, he won in 2019. No, no, that, that is so, not the so point. So, where Zaka, is the question of defaming? No, no, no. No, no, no. no where is the question of, of defaming? Of course, there is a question no, no. of defaming. How, how, uh, how, saying, how, no, no, how second, is, how second. is Dr. Tarur being defamed if Tarur, after this case came, being, after this so-called media trial, he has still won elections? Maybe, maybe the defaming prevented him from becoming the president of the Congress party. I'm no, 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 come on, on. come on, no, no, I think that why is, that is a different uh, ball game altogether, I, I, look, Zaka, you second. and I both Zaka, know there were different forces at play one, there, one second, but, uh, nothing to do with the say, case or nothing to do one, one with, second, you know, so-called media trial, there Zaka, were different political say, factors no, no, one there one at play, let's not, let's not get into that, okay, quickly, quickly, I gotta wrap up, yeah, if you're saying, Defamation is to be measured only in terms of political consequences in one constituency. I'm sorry, I disagree. He has been defamed across the country, across the no, world, no, because second. he's a literary one, figure one, known one far second. beyond one the borders second. of I, India. I, I, I have so a very, very don't, simple. Don't there is a law, the there election, is a provision the of election, law so no which defamation. deals with criminal defamation. There are a number of cases that have gone uh, into that matter. Anyway, this case is not about defamation. Let me go back to. Uh, Kapil Sankla, and please answer the question that both uh, Ashpreet was asking as well as, of course, uh, Mr. Sumant Raman was asking. There are no witnesses uh, to this crime, alleged crime. Uh, there is no one in the family of Sunanda or their friends or anyone who is saying that Shashi Tarur was the reason she committed quote unquote suicide, if at all uh, it is a case of uh, suicide and abetment to suicide. And number three, most importantly, the time mm. since this incident happened 2014 today is 2022 what material evidence may come in the hands of the delhi police now eight years after this quote unquote said incident happened that may change the nature of uh, the discharge or the nature of the conclusion that the, the lower court came to vis-a-vis -vis mr tarur please allow me to answer this as a lawyer which i am you see, as far as the matter is concerned in the High Court, it's a revision petition. And revision argued purely on law. It is not really argued on facts. Unless and until some new facts and cogent facts are brought in. My understanding is that there were ample evidences that were filed with the charge sheet by the police. However, the trial court did not appreciate the nature of the evidence, saying that these are circumstantial in, in nature. And probably the links are not too well connected, giving the benefit to Dr. Tharoor. I understand that. I appreciate that. You would see the exception here. There are two exceptions. One, the trial actually did not commence. For seven and a half years, the matter was lingering on only on the argument on charge, which is an exception to the general rule. And after seven, seven and a half years, Dr. Tharoor was discharged, which is again an exception. Yeah. Of the lakhs and lakhs cases, only I think a couple of them get discharged without trial, without evidences being led. And in cases which are circumstantial in, in nature, you might not have clinching evidence. But you might have witnesses which are like the links uh, the ch to a chain with that leads right. to guilt of an accused. So usually what happens is that a chance is given to the prosecution to bring their case before the court. Probably this was a very big <coughs> case. Probably the co court was cogent of the fact that Dr. Shah right. Tharoor is a, is a uh, person of national uh, fame. Uh, probably decided that seven and a half years is too much time. That's all right. But you have to bring this before the court in the high court for it to appreciate in a revision. And okay, the I'm afraid is that uh, I, I'm completely out of time. Sorry about it. Uh, I have to go to live shots that are coming in now. Thank you very much to all our guests. All right, let's go to uh, the live shots that are coming in from Ahmedabad. Remember, the Prime Minister is undertaking a mega road show there. It's 50 kilometers long uh, across all the constituencies of Ahmedabad plus one constituency in Gandhinagar. Remember, 89 constituencies went to polls earlier today in the first phase. The remaining constituencies will go to polls on the 5th of December. That is Monday. And the Prime Minister leading a massive road show there. This is in keeping with what we've seen the Prime Minister do in other major elections, whether it was the UP election when he went to Banaras and had a road show there. Uh, we've seen this in the past as well. Uh, so the, the amount of support that uh, has turned up for the Prime Minister, it's incredible. Siddhant is joining us now. Siddhant, you've been there in Gujarat uh, on a number of occasions now in the last two or three months during this campaign. Uh, the kind of uh, 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 almost awe that people there have for uh, Narendra Modi, adoration and awe that they have for him, 
uh, even after eight years and before that 12 years as chief minister, 20 years in public office, uh, that doesn't seem to be minimizing or coming down in any form or fashion. If anything, it's only increasing. Absolutely, Zaka. And in fact, you know, uh, our Madhmi party uh, always wanted to become a factor here in the state of Gujarat. In fact, they always spoke about what has not been done in the state. Uh, uh, if state doesn't have good schools, they, uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, hyper-local issues. They have always spoken about it. But look at the people here on uh, on the streets of Ahmedabad, Zaka. They say it all. Like if, if after 27 years of being in power, if somebody who is enjoying this crowd, this popularity, this love, then you know, uh, uh, this crowd has left all of us speechless. Because, because Ahmedabad, one of the bastions of Bharti Janta Party, and you know, Aam Aadmi Party, Congress Party, they all have, all have extensively campaigned in Ahmedabad, Surat. But look at the crowd, the way people have come on the streets to welcome the Prime Minister, to, uh, to catch a glimpse of a Prime Minister. And this time around, Prime Minister has chosen this a very unique format where he is carrying out this roadshow, 50 kilometers long roadshow in a single go. So he's covering all constituency of Ahmedabad plus one constituency in Gandhinagar. And this is going to be Prime Minister's last roadshow. Tomorrow he has four public meetings in, 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 in Gujarat and then he's going to end his election campaign in the state. But what, uh, you know, what messaging is being done here is that and and in fact uh, you know zaka jise kehte na ki ek ek dish mein aur masala dal diya malikarjuna kharge ke us bayan ne the statement the ravan remark that he has made log pair pe kulhadi marte hain unhone kulhadi mein apna pair de mara malikarjuna kharge ne kyunki because of that statement only you know uh, uh, you know the love has increased for the prime minister and even even we have been reporting from a very first day zaka that that this is the biggest mistake that congress party has again committed since 2008, they have been in the business of committing this mistake by making personal remarks on the Prime Minister. This time around, again, it has boomerang. And, and, and why I'm saying it has boomerang and it has gone against them? Because I can see the people coming on the streets of Ahmedabad to welcome the Prime Minister. So, so people always say that, you know, BJP is doing this to kill anti-incumbency, BJP is doing that to kill anti-incumbency. All right, uh, Siddhant, just give me a moment. I'm sorry I'm interrupting, but we had pictures just moments ago of the Prime Minister's convoy sort of making way, if you will. You can see those pictures again, uh, making way to the side so that an ambulance which was right behind uh, was given right of passage. You can see that uh, ambulance, you can see the flashing lights of the ambulance right behind there. Uh, this happened just moments ago. The Prime Minister's convoy, you can see the SPG sort of uh, coming in. There were people who were behind uh, the convoy coming to the front and telling the SPG to move the convoy uh, slightly to a, towards the side of the road and then allowing the ambulance to pass through. And if I remember when he was there in uh, Gujarat a few weeks ago also for a campaign event, something similar had happened uh, where there was an ambulance that was uh, uh, given right of passage, if you will, uh, given the right of way uh, to pass through uh, and the convoy had to stop. You can see the images on the right. Uh, the pictures on the left are the live shots and the ones on the right uh, happened just moments ago where you can see the SPG personnel there directing the ambulance, allowing it to move forward, uh, giving it right of way as it were and the convoy sort of moving to the side uh, uh, for, for, a, uh, for a brief moment. So let me go back to Sudan. Sudan, just uh, walk us through the, uh, the pictures, please. Yes, that's what Zaka, you know, every time, every time Zaka, we speak about anti-incumbency in the state. We say, nahi, log thoda naraz hai, nahi, is bar demonetization hai, is bar GST hai, is bar COVID mismanagement hai. You know, every time, you know, uh, opposition parties try to create this atmosphere of anti-incumbency. They give statements, they make personal remarks on Prime Minister. But it seems, uh, you know, there's no effect on people of, uh, of Gujarat. You know, look at the crowd on the road, jam-packed. Ahmedabad is jam-packed. This is, I'm, I'm witnessing a very different Ahmedabad today. I've never seen this Ahmedabad before. I've covered many road shows of the Prime Minister and trust me, the kind of crowd that, which has come today is unprecedented, unexpected. And this is happening after 27 years of being in power. All right. Okay, Sudan, so, we'll leave so, it at so that. We'll see how uh, the story plays out for the BJP. Remember, the second phase is happening on Monday, the 5th of December. That's when Ahmedabad, Baroda... The other big cities will go to polls uh, and we'll see uh, if the grip that the BJP has in Gujarat after 27 years continues to be just as strong, whether that will 
further tighten because remember the last election happened under the shadow of the Patidar agitation. So the BJP had been cut down to its worst performance in almost five elections. Uh, can it better that uh, in this current election cycle? We'll wait and see and we'll know on the 8th of December. That's a wrap. Griha joining you with the biggest exclusive.